We've used the terms like close observation or observational drawing and we're recommending that you look very closely at your object when you're drawing it to be very observant. But what does that actually mean? What are we looking for? I mean, we're looking for the form, yes, the sort of the outer, you know, the basic general shapes and uh, the way the negative space falls around the object as well. We look for highlights like here and here. There's another highlight over here. There's some very bright highlights actually, like this one here and down here on the handle. Uh, there are a couple of other areas along the, the rim that are particularly bright because the light is reflecting off them more strongly from one vantage point than another. So that's another reason why we recommend that you keep your head fairly still as you're drawing so that you're not moving around too much and changing your own view of the object. Um, you'll notice that this plane here is much brighter than this plane here because yes the light is coming from uh, from here and behind as well which is causing this shadow over here. Are the shadows black? No they're not. I don't actually see any black in this. In fact in real life there isn't much that is actually truly black. It's more like really dark red, really dark blue, very dark brown. Um, so even in the darkest shadow areas, like under here, there's actually no black. So when you render it in pencil, you do build up the shading, but make sure you don't go too dark. And you want to be observant of the variations in tones as well, the gradation of tones. So we've got uh, the brightest highlights or the shiniest areas. I think the areas right along under here, under the feet, are the darkest. Some, a technique that can help you is to squint. If you squint and until you can hardly see through your eyelashes, you'll start to see the different values. You stop seeing so much detail and you start to see just values. So when I squint like mad, I can see that this is really dark compared to everything else. This is actually, even though it looks kind of bright, uh, it's a sort of more of a mid-tone. There's another mid-tone in here and this area on the inside of the cup is also quite bright. So just learning to observe the variations in tonal values, in uh, how the light's actually moving around the object. This object is quite smooth, so I don't really have to worry about texture too much, although there's some areas where there are chips in the ceramic. And um, I may choose to include them in the final drawing, and I may choose to not include them in the final drawing. An interesting thing about shadows, when we look at the bottom of objects, I'm going to try zooming in here, is that even though we know that the object is sitting on the table surface and the shadow is quite dark under here, there's actually always a little tiny reflection of light off the table surface, especially when it's light colored like this one. So yes, we see a dark tone down in this area here, but right above it is a little slice of light. So if you include that little tiny slice of light that you've observed that, it actually makes, it'll make the object look like it's actually seated on the surface that it's sitting on and not kind of floating above it. So adding shadow toward the bottom, but then making sure you address that little sliver of highlight that's reflecting off the table surface will make your object look more realistic. I can see that there's a fair amount of tonal change in the handle, the bottom of the handle of the cup as well. I've got a nice highlight right in here, sort of a lighter gray in here, a lighter shadow here, and then there's a dark strip right here, and then it becomes lighter again. If I change, if I move my head and change my angle of view too much, I actually have see different effects. So it's really important to make sure you don't move around in your seat too much. It is a bit challenging when you, you know, if you have to take a break and you come back to the drawing uh, to find that exact vantage point again. But um, if you lay it out nicely on your page, rough it in very lightly. You always start with very light outlines. Um, then you'll be able to find that 
angle again once you sit down and start drawing again.